I should not wait more. So my question is from Mr. Hemant Verma. So can you please expand data center capacity with multi-level digitization as uh, means through multi-level digitization can we extend the capacity of any cloud or any data center? Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, myself, Hemant Verma from Punjab National Bank. I am heading IT operations of the bank. Uh, as you asked, data center capabilities in the multi-level digitization. So uh, as far as BFSI concern, uh, post pandemic, the digitization part is increasing many fold. So we need to extend our capability and capacity. For that, definitely uh, we need to extend our uh, capability to give customer a best, best experience, uh, better UI, UX, move with more agility, more flexibility. Uh, for that, we are leveraging both on-prem, uh, being a uh, owner of custodian of uh, public data, uh, we have to be very, very cautious uh, going on cloud. Though we are adopting the cloud, we are already embarked on this journey. So uh, we are expanding our data centers both on-prem as well as cloud, whether it is public cloud or private cloud, this hybrid mode, we are working on it. And the time has come. It's not only for BFI sector, for all the sectors my colleagues are sitting from different uh, domains here, everybody will accept it. They have to work, uh, extend their capabilities in all the areas of whatever is available in the cloud adoption also. Uh, because uh, the customer demand is increasing for, for us, like UPI is increasing many fold. Uh, we are catering more than 50 lakh transaction per uh, month and it is increasing. What we have sized three years back till 2025, it is already surpassed. So for that kind of agility, we have to have in our system, in our capacity, so that uh, agility and expandability only can be given through cloud or cloud model can be anything, whether it is private or hybrid and all. Wow, great. So being in being in uh, banking industry, that to public sector, it's again you are leveraging cloud to the certain extent. So how do you decide uh, which application should go on on prime, which, which application should go on cloud? So is there any strategy around that? Yes, uh, uh, we are uh, going the. Uh, applications to begin with like our uh, internal application we have taken up with, uh, with which are not more customer facing uh, again I said my earlier answer that we are custodian of public data so we are very conservative uh, regulator a lot of compliances are there so uh, to begin with uh, all internal application we are taking a processing part we have started doing on the cloud and for various journey uh, we are starting so that processing uh, can happen faster with more agility and uh, security uh, in the cloud. But otherwise, uh, right now we are on private cloud, of course we have, but public cloud we are going very cautiously. Wonderful, so two data points for internal application on-prime and for the customer facing application where uh, further analysis, analytics has to be done, that is on cloud. Correct. Yeah. So next question to Mr. Harshwardhan. So he's uh, from the insurance sector. So what is your view on cybersecurity mesh approach, right? So how does it help to cloud adoption in terms of flexibility and scalability? Sure, so uh, my take on this is like uh, uh, Mr. Hammond shared, that all the organizations are looking forward to move to cloud, utilize the availability and the scalability it provides. However, with cloud, there come the security challenges, right? Uh, earlier, you had multiple security solutions in place to cater multiple security requirements across your data center as well as now it is being added to the cloud as well. So somewhere all these security solutions, security products, these were working in silos. CSMA or this cloud security uh, mesh architecture, it exactly uh, cater the same requirement. It is a framework or approach uh, which basically Gartner has shared with us uh, has given the industry basically this framework. And as per their recent report also, it is one of the 
strategic trend in the organization to go for CSMA approach in their cloud journey. It helps them to overcome the scalability or flexibility issue of the security policy or posture management of different, different clouds if they are into multi-cloud environment. Or maybe if you are deciding for a hybrid cloud, still you are using multiple cloud application in your environment. Maybe your developers are using some of the uh, uh, you know, code coding platforms or maybe your uh, operations are using some of the utilities which to share data or something. All in all, as an organization, you need to be comply with your uh, compliance as well as the regulatory guidelines. So when we see all of this, there are multiple different different security policies or postures to be created across multiple cloud and thus manageability becomes very critical for those. CSMA actually address all these problems by providing four basic layers. One, it talks about your SOC part, which has to be uh, intelligence enough so that all your security tools can collaborate it uh, within themselves, get the event, analyze those events, and give the intelligence back to your same or SOAR platform so that it, they can take the actions. The second part, uh, second layer it talks about is the distributed identity platform, which is basically ask you to have decentralized identification of users, their adaptive uh, access to be implemented, so most of the part you don't want, you know, uh, a user on a work from home scenario or maybe working from anywhere. If he is trying to access a resource he is not being entitled to, he should have an automatic mechanism where he can raise a request, some approval comes and uh, his access can be provisioned. Basis his security posture or maybe basis his uh, 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 request is authorized or not. The third part it talks about a consolidated security policy and posture management uh, solution for our, all of the clouds or either if you are in a multi-cloud environment for your data center security solutions as well as the cloud security solutions. The last layer it talks about the dashboard. You must have a single dashboard or maybe a tool which can collaborate all information from all these silo products and uh, giving you all the information one single dashboard where someone can look and, and act upon. You have a ready matrix, thus increasing your ROI, increasing your uh, return on security operations. So that's how you know uh, this can help organization uh, building a better security approach to multi-cloud or hybrid environment while achieving the better ROIs. So uh, I mean you have a lot of, lot of product which are implemented, a lot of policy you are uh, implemented. So cyber security mess is the only solutions to have consolidated things to take it forward, Correct. right? It's an architecture basically which provides you guidelines at how to do this. And the rest basically you need to choose the tools which are providing open APIs to connect with uh, each other. Uh, they are ready to share information with other tools so that it can be utilized and prepare uh, or give you the more benefits out of it. Thank you. Pankaj. So, uh, Pankaj, so question to you. How do you see the cloud will become a major business enabler in future? So, first of all, thanks to Quantic team inviting us to on this panel discussion. So, myself, Pankaj Roy, I'm heading the IT operation for Moon, Moon Beverages. We are into the official bottler of uh, beverages company, which is Coca-Cola. Now, now, we are driving and sales and distribution of Coca-Cola. So, we are into a very seasonal kind of business where uh, we are uh, expanding, uh, expanding horizontally, adding to the distributors and the uh, retailers. So where the, we require the high capacity of uh, compute resources in the seasonability. So like the, so we leverage the cloud computing for this uh, to enhancing the growth engine for the business. So that is the thing. So how do you decide like, uh, so s uh, your whole overall infrastructure is on cloud or uh, it's, it's on on-prem as well? No, no, uh, we, uh, we have a hybrid kind of uh, setup. So, so we have the on-prem also. So which is uh, current ERP we are running on the on-prem. But for the front-end application, which is distribution automation systems and your order taking management from the retailers, which is the SaaS based solutions, we already migrated on that and which is supported by the AWS. 
So it means Thank hybrid you. kind of solutions you have implemented for various kind of things. Thank you. And uh, so Richard Saab, uh, sorry. Yeah, you can you can continue. Yeah, okay, done. <laughs> so Richard Saab, uh, there is a emerging technology is the very key word, right? Like it is it's spoken mm -hmm. everywhere. So how do you tackle uncertainty and constraint with the evaluation of disruptive technologies? So uh, how do you see this? Uh, dis uh, disruptive technologies. As the name suggests, whenever the new innovation comes, it uh, replaces the existing technology. Either uh, it itself replaces or we are forced to replace it. Um, <coughs> to understand better and the challenges we faced, um, uh, I will take you back to uh, three decades back. Uh, when I, when I uh, did my college, uh, it was we were using the mainframe computers, where we were not allowed to enter the computer center. We had, uh, if you want to enter the internet, you have to remove shoes and uh, make it dust free, and uh, then only you will allow to see, only look the computers and you have to come out, you have to write the code in um, uh, sheets, then it will be processed in uh, data sheets, uh, like that, that, that's the system. Then comes uh, when I joined, um, uh, started my career, then personal computer era started. So we started uh, with, uh, DBase and Cobalt, we started uh, developing application DBase, a small personal computer with 1.2 MB floppy drives. So we process the data, we keep it in a floppy drive, multiple backups, we take it and store in a place. Then after some time, we have seen a, a new technology came, Windows started uh, evolving. So uh, we thought of going for a client server technology. Then we started slowly, Migrated to our applications. They don't want to accept the new systems. We have to force them to uh, use the systems. Then after one, uh, five years gone, then we thought of uh, management thought that they said, uh, this is client only will not work. We go for enterprise wide application. So we thought of going for uh, enterprise or distribution. We selected uh, SAP. So, but the challenge comes here is uh, when, our, when we go for uh, client server technology, we were, we were uh, in a installed small server setup in a server room, and uh, we used to uh, through network they used to distribute the application. But in uh, SAP, it is not possible. We require uh, uh, production server. Uh, development server, and testing server, it is not possible to uh, install in a server room. We require a big data center. It is very difficult to uh, build the data center. So what we thought, what, what do you have to do? Then, because the uh, data center uh, requires uh, physical securities as well as uh, network security, more security is required. So we thought of going for a data center at that time. So, uh, the cloud also started that time. But our management said that we do not go for a uh, cloud, it is security is there. Then they don't want also go for a data center approach also. They said we should build the in-house data center, but, but uh, we thought it is not possible. We have to train people, we have to recruit people, it is not possible to recruit uh, uh, new employees. And uh, it is not possible to train the employees in different uh, technologies. We, in operating system, uh, we have to train, we have to train a, a web. Then is uh, database, so it is not possible. So we have moved to uh, the data center approach. We manage, we have taken service from uh, BSNL, manage data services. We installed our uh, SAP applications over there, and slowly we have migrated from the, the client server application to uh, the enterprise server application. But still, the user don't want to uh, migrate to the SAP. They were used to it in the old system only. But parallelly, what we said, we, we run the both applications parallelly, both uh, SAP as well as for uh, three years. And slowly, we have started the uh, DGC application. So now we are full, fully we are using the SAP. So now comes the next evaluation cloud, because uh, we now go for uh, ERVs application, uh, uh, other um, uh, cloud application we want to go. So it's not possible with the data center itself. So we require multiple servers. So it is, uh, now it is time to move to the cloud. 
So ultimately, you have just evolved from the personal computer to the data center to the cloud. So you, you just explain the whole journey. They are really interesting. <laughs> so Mr. Kundu, uh, being a CISO of a large power generation company, largest power generation company, so how do you see cloud journey? What should be the route, right approach to adopt the cloud? First of all, thank you to the organizers. Uh, heartfelt thanks for inviting me to be part of this distinct distinguished panel. Uh, well, uh, for us, it is more of like uh, uh, taking a very cautious, judicious, and uh, intuitive approach. Uh, see, although these mighty guidelines and uh, uh, as far as these uh, policies and frameworks are concerned, it is pretty clear, but uh, one of the uh, baseline for thinking on this one for us is uh, segregation of uh, sensitive business critical and uh, critical information infrastructure uh, items and then subsequently how these items can be mapped into different kind of applications what is what are the different efficacies of using this kind of applications and what can be the fallback options based upon that uh, slowly uh, once we have segregated okay these are non critical applications we can move them to cloud going for a SaaS kind of thing or an infrastructure uh, as a service kind of a thing. Those parts are already done. And now it's more of a complex thing where uh, it's like uh, thinking about the critical applications, what part of them can be transferred to the cloud. Although speaking these things means in NTPC we have one of the largest installations of M365, uh, which is running pretty well. Uh, but still, I would say that it's a very cautious approach and uh, in that approach, understanding uh, 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 how much part should be on-prem, how to make use of the already existing huge amount of infrastructures in the form of data centers. Though I would recall an incident that during COVID for an utility infrastructure, powered utility infrastructure like us, where in spite of the COVID regulations and the strict norms, I remember people uh, in work in, working in SIFT, entire, uh, uh, entire SIFT uh, has been COVID affected. And we at that time were thinking about really can we go to a zero trust environment for operations as well, uh, leaving aside the IT part. So those are the things that we really think, but at the end of the day uh, means uh, again, actually implementing that zero trust environment, we are doing it for our IT, uh, it is already implemented for our IT part. But again, since we are dealing with different operation uh, criticalities, so uh, we need to actually balance out the things and then accordingly uh, 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 judge it and uh, apply it in the actual sense. Okay, so uh, as you say, zero trust, so uh, it is it is for a specifically for IT area or it's uh, across uh, the organization you are talking about because you have a very oh. large user base, big plant and every type of manpower is there. So I think to uh, make that policy and implementation would be really a challenge for you. Right, so uh, if I go into a little bit detail like uh, we used to work on MPLS for connecting our 35 installations, uh, roughly 35 installations. Uh, we have already converted into SD1. But when we are thinking in those COVID days for operation environment, where we are talking about hardcore cyber physical systems, uh, because uh, affecting those systems really affect uh, the uh, business. And not only the business, uh, it affects the Indian infrastructure as a whole, because power is a very critical item. Uh, in that, we are trying to introduce from a perimeter kind of a concept to a non-perimeter kind of a concept, partly. But you know, in, in some cases, the old fort still will continue to exist. Uh, outright, you cannot break away from the fort and go into a non-perimeter environment. So uh, it's a mix of the thing, but for IT, it is already established because people can work from home in NTPC uh, as far as the IT sector is concerned. But for the OT, it's a mix and match kind of a thing which will slowly evolve over time. Yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, Sushil Saab, uh, since uh, he also comes from the critical infrastructure uh, sector. So uh, I just wanted to say, uh, ask you like, uh, what is, uh, how do you tackle this cyber insurance kind of thing uh, in your organization? Uh, is, is there any roadmap or, or you are thinking about it? 
our organization is a critical information infrastructure so the role of the cyber uh, insurance is that uh, in the worst case of scenario your balance sheet is protected so uh, 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 when you have to carry out the cyber insurance for your system they, the insurance company does not automatically carry out the insurance they first study your whole organization what effort, uh, what efforts and what infrastructure you have uh, installed how you are uh, protecting your assets it assets and ot assets from the uh, attack uh, and uh, what peri uh, uh, what uh, security parameters you have implemented what type of firewalls and whether you are having um, uh, soc uh, zero trust architecture and all those things they check and uh, they have a very detailed uh, questionnaire etc and you have to reply to those uh, uh, questions also so uh, this uh, cyber insurance is not like normal insurance that uh, every uh, based on the value everybody will get the same premium the premium of the uh, company will depend on its readiness to meet the attack of the cyber apart from the cyber attack in case any uh, financial fraud happens some uh, uh, mistake or uh, this thing happen in the financial transaction that also gets covered into the uh, uh, cyber uh, insurance uh, of the company as regarding this uh, uh, cyber insurance once this cyber insurance is carried out and uh, in the worst case uh, some attack happens you have to first prove that this attack has happened due to uh, this uh, not ha happened due to any misconfiguration and this thing it has happened uh, due to cyber attack so uh, uh, you will not get the uh, this claim from the cyber insurance just in any case uh, any attack because th uh, the cyber uh, uh, the insurance company will keep try in proving you that this uh, uh, attack has happened because there was some misconfiguration you have not applied the patch properly your password policy was weak and also so uh, you will get the cyber insurance only if uh, your all systems are protected in spite of that uh, this cyber attack happens so uh, in the even after taking the cyber insurance you have to be very cautious and protect the, your system very systematically so only then you will be able to get the, uh, uh, the claim of the cyber okay so uh, means it is a holistic thing it is not just uh, like you have just on asset based in general insurance which comes it's again new topic for me so uh, uh, hopefully the challenge will increase once cloud come into the picture as far as cloud is concerned when say an organization is taking insurance and he is having uh, they are having few uh, of the components in on the on-prem and few are in the uh, this uh, cloud so they will take uh, their questionnaire field from your uh, 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 cloud service provider and they will uh, 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 check whether the cloud uh, service provider is managing those infra and those uh, software etc properly only then they will provide you the uh, 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 this uh, cyber insurance it is uh, not that uh, they will provide uh, blindly they will first assess whether your organization on premise as well as in cloud they are ready to uh, 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 give the uh, this insurance to you okay so uh, ultimately one layer of compliance is you are already added to your in addition to your it compliances right yeah, so yeah. regularly you have to monitor all these things accordingly uh, you can get all these things once any any unforeseen incident happens Thank okay so uh, excuse me on a lighter note uh, do we have act of god in your cyber insurance no okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, navin ji yeah. so being an oem so uh, you are representative from the sophos so what is your cloud strategy we have we have heard uh, from the industry we have said from the public sector so what do you think about it like being an you are dealing so many things you are launching so many products so many services so what is your perspective on that 
Well, uh, cloud is taking off, no doubt, everywhere. It's everywhere. I was uh, reading one of the article uh, just two, three days before. Uh, in 2023, by the end of 2023, uh, cloud market is going to reach somewhere around 5.96 billion US dollar in India itself, for India market. So it's a big opportunity for everyone. And at the same time, there are too much benefits to adopt the cloud. That is why every organization increasing their cloud budget year on year. They are spending more. Because uh, when we were planning to have everything on-prem, there's a too much difference between adopt, adoption of cloud. For example, no need to worry about the capacity, most important. Second thing, no, ex no need to manage expensive data centers. And third, you can go live in few minutes. Good. You can plan very fast. But yes, at the same time, we have to understand cloud's service provider cannot give you 100% cyber security over there. We have to understand that. When you're adopting cloud, this is the shared responsibility cyber security model. Cyber sec cloud provider giving you security for their cloud. But at the same time, customer has the responsibility what they are placing there. Okay. What they are placing there. They will give you complete protection of their cloud. As I mentioned, like you being a customer moving towards cloud, we are also in race. OEMs are also moving towards that. If you might have noticed, most of the OEMs have changed their offering from on-prem to cloud. We have also changed that. There are so many reasons behind that. There are so many buzzwords in the market you must have seen like SASE, JetDNA, SD-WAN, artificial intelligence, machine learning. If I think over that, just taking an example in for like XDR or EDR, what do this technology actually. This technology work on your incidents and event happened on your endpoint. Whatever endpoint you are using, there are certain events or incidents happens. And this is the job of the endpoint to detect that and generate the logs over there. This is the job of endpoint. And what is the job of EDR and XDR to consolidate those, these, those logs and provide to customer. But Actual job of the EDR is that to do or apply artificial intelligence and machine learning on such logs and give you a small, clear, straightforward picture, which is for your action. This is the actual job of that. But if you are using on-prem solutions to do such kind of intelligence on events and incidents, in on-prem solution, it's not easy. It's a really very tough. You do understand that. But on cloud, where we have S3 kind of bucket technology, which is more effective and efficient, we can do the work very fast in an efficient manner. Same if you see like uh, JetTNA or SASE, there are many cybersecurity and service system. We can't apply these technologies if you don't have cloud. Uh, cutting the story into short. We at Sophos, we have a platform with the name of Sophos Central, which is the cloud-based platform to manage entire Sophos portfolio. So what is the benefit to manage this entire Sophos portfolio with a single console? First thing, complete visibility. Second thing, easy to manage. And the most important thing in terms of security, every solution have a center command where they are sharing real-time activities running on every solutions. Means your cybersecurity solutions are not running in silos. You are running adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem, synchronized security, which is more powerful than any other security tool. 
So this is the platform. And on top of that, if you see my products like network security, fire, in fire network security, we have firewalls, endpoints, workflow balanced, encryption, mobile device management, and ma so many solutions. Uh, we have an entire portfolio, 360 degree cyber security. So entire portfolio when you are managing through this portal and under data lake where we are working on like tools like uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and on top of that MDR manage detection and response which is 24 into 7 into 365 we were discussing just few hours back in the room so team retention is the biggest challenge for any damn organization if you hire one person you train that after six months bye bye so no need to worry about that no need to retain those persons we are here to serve you with the entire solution plus the combination of service with 37 of your 37 years of industry experience in 142 countries we are serving to 5 lakh 40 thousand customers across the globe and more than 65 thousand customers in india itself so this is the way we are thinking for cloud security to make our customers satisfied and happy so ultimately the in the in the era of cloud adoption you you have changed your model uh, which which can give which can provide the better better security model to the customers right i think if someone will wait to adopt the cloud the way behind it will be Great. we have to be in the race thank you and thank you uh, team quantic for this wonderful event thank you congratulations so mr ganesh so being a cloud partner right so uh, lot many responsibility on your shoulders as well so so my question is because lot many it, IT spendings are there right so day by day the, this this budget is going to extend and increasing day by day right so increase IT spend with growing innovation and security demand what is your view on that okay so uh, by the sheer role that we play of being a technology partner to most of the organizations, we bear witness to their entire transformation, right? We are also a catalyst in their transformation, but we bear witness to their transformation. And the way that I would want to elucidate is, uh, in the past, at least in the past three to five years, the amount of acceleration that we have seen in most of our customers trying to adopt a journey which resonates with their strategic goals in IT is phenomenal, right? From our perspective, we end up partnering with them like water fills any jug, right? It takes the shape of the jug. So if it's a long neck jug, the water takes the same shape, right? We've realized that uh, in this journey, every organization and specifically in the government segment, they have their own constraints. So while they might have a lot of budgets, they might have a lot of long-term views, we also understand that they are caught up in constraints with which they need to follow A, the procurement process, B, the standardization, and C, despite all this, they have to serve the end customer without any drop in the services, right? So when I put this heady mix together, when I bear a witness to their transformation, what it ends up transpiring is, there are places wherein I end up working with them in the overall uh, transformation journey, including security, which can be in-house, depending upon their preference. With the expenses going up and their additional budgets, we also end up collaborating with folks who provide security on the cloud. Because as I said in the beginning, our role is to enable, our role is that of a catalyst. So if, if a customer specifically wants, uh, without naming, right, we serve some of the most sensitive uh, installations in India, uh, which are into defense, right? And they don't have the flexibility, uh, while they might have the capacity, they don't have the flexibility to go onto a public cloud. That should not put them at a disadvantage of having a functionality similar to cloud. We end up providing that with security, right? And on the extreme right side is one of the topmost FSI uh, players in India in government who've automated their entire setup and they've been running for the past uh, four and a half years on Nutanix, wherein they've bridged 
the requirement of security, the requirement of putting in new applications, both as well as on-prem, as Heyman sir said, as well as on cloud, and we've helped them bridge that gap. So when I be a witness to this across different segments, I realize that A, it's not one size fits all. It doesn't work that way. And B, as a partner, unless until I am as flexible as their strategic map rolls out to be, there is no way this transformation project will see the end of the light. Okay. So different solution for different kind of problem, Absolutely. right? And then you need to be like, have a good journey, a better journey with the Right. right. So unless until you you sing the melody as per the person who's ready to hear, there is no point in uh, expecting success. Because what I might have might uh, fit like a glove for one person, it might not fit for the other person at all. Right. So what is the role of automation in enhancing the security? So how do you how do you see this? Like a lot many automation we are understanding in every every area of uh, IT sector, right? So, so what is the role? So I think, see, uh, automation used to be a buzzword. Now it's uh, an expectation. It is a bare minimum expectation that we see. Because uh, as the eminent panelists have put forth, in different way they have touched across the evolution as well as uh, the automation that is expected, right? Right from the era of uh, 30 years back to currently coming to a data center to possibly automating the entire security response posture, right? Automation is the bedrock of all. To take a very simple example, right? Uh, we, all of us do not give a second thought when we open up a mobile phone and, you know, we flip through. We expect the UX to be as smooth and the phones are rated on top of it. Not very far away, a couple of decades back, you used to have a phone that did not have this kind of an automation. And your applications were all disparate. You had a separate phone app, you had a separate camera app, calendar, so on and so forth. But automation has managed to bring that all together in a single UX and a easy to use manner. So in this journey, if you do not have automation built in, and that does not integrate with your security posture, that does not extend to your security provider. and in today's date, you do not have a single security provider. You have multiple security providers. And as Naveen said, the, the uh, responsibility after a point of time becomes shared. It's also the cloud service provider as well as the person who is leveraging that. And in the midst of that is the ability to translate all of that into actionable intelligence, right? And automation plays that part. So when we come down to Nutanix per se, automation anyways, is the start with which we start the entire process. We also end up integrating with all of the service providers that are available in the market, providing a public cloud service, including the GCC. And we complement it with all the security providers also who are there in the market with different variants. Because we realize, as I said, one size does not fit all. So there might be a requirement wherein there is a very specific need for a security provider to be installed on premise. At that point of time, I cannot say that my automation engine will not work with the security provider because it's been tailored only for the cloud. So for us, it's, it's always been a balancing act. It's always been a balancing act for the customer in mind, keeping the customer in mind, because all of my customers have different requirements. Even in today's panel, I've got two customers who are successfully using it without naming them, right? And they have been growing up, they have been scaling up, they have been transforming their entire business on the basis of this automation and leveraging everything. So without automation in today's times, I don't see any strategy going forward. Great, so automation is in the backbone and all stakeholders would be in sync, right? Absolutely. So I think one last question, uh, I think anybody can take it. So, so multi-cloud laying, laying the foundation for the futuristic business, like what is the view on that? Because we had talked about uh, hybrid, we talked about uh, various, very various uh, establishments. So, so now, what is the way out on multi-cloud kind of thing? Okay, I'll pass it across from here so that it, the mic can travel yeah, back. Sure. Right. So, uh, it's like saying that quickly uh, in 30 seconds, right? Yeah, quick, 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 <laughs> quick. So, in multi-cloud, essentially, you are having options, right? At the same time, you need to go from point A to point B. It's as as simple as saying that. Aaj main apni gaadi nahi chalunga. Aaj main Uber ke saath jaunga ya Ola ke saath jaunga ya Meru ke saath jaunga. Lekin mere ko jana hai yahan se Karolbagh. My destination is fixed. 
I should have the flexibility to leverage whatever I want. Unless until my strategy does not support that, whatever I have today will fail after a point of time. So any provider, any partner that you have, unless until they have the ability to bridge this gap, this will fail. I think uh, I can see a biggest challenge when you are using uh, multiple cloud service providers. The biggest challenge uh, in terms of when I come in the you know, customer shoe is the visibility. Because I'm sure if I ask any CIO, most of the CIO will not able to confidently tell me how many assets they have hosted on cloud. This is why I can say visibility is the biggest challenge when you are using multiple cloud service providers. And you can't fix if you can't see. So okay. visibility is most important in terms of security. My point on this cloud is that, say, if, uh, we take uh, uh, cloud, say, for five, uh, five years, and then after five years, again, tending is done, and different cloud provider comes. The migration of the data from the one cloud provider to the other cloud provider, uh, uh, we are not getting a much clear answer. OK. okay so. I think the, as Sarah has already told that uh, the procurement policy will enable multiple cloud. It's by default because we have to go for L1. However, saying so means uh, uh, data download, data uh, address, all these are very tricky terms uh, and clauses which are need to be minutely understood. And at the same point of time, another thing is the interface part. Means if we are really distributing things, we have to be pretty clear about the interface and the access that we are doing onto it. So we have seen that data grows uh, drastically. Now we are talk think, uh, talking about big data. So ultimately, I think we have to move towards uh, cloud only. There's no other option. So nowadays, the business uh, expectation is changing very fast. So they are expecting the solution is uh, very fast uh, in terms of delivery of the uh, any application and which is supported to the business growth. So adoption of multi-cloud is depends on the your business requirement and the business strategy and the business uh, future vision. So as per the strategy of the company, you can decide and you can leverage the multi-cloud or the hybrid cloud or the public cloud. You can leverage the capability of the cloud stream. So this. See, for a multi-cloud environment, basically, uh, the major security challenges has been uh, the different, different security policies or the security posture which they offer, as well as the diversity in their operation or the uh, you know shared service responsibility model. So I would say uh, if you are going out for a multi-cloud uh, environment, we must re-examine our priorities on the form of how much data to which cloud and uh, you know how do I secure that. So you must have a framework planned well in advance according to which you can migrate your data or applications through multiple cloud platforms. Because once it is in the cloud, you might not have a central console or the central uh, you know management of all the different, different policy providers which can help you uh, adhere to the compliance uh, of the organization or of the regulatory. <clears throat> but I think uh, the, the way things are moving, that everything is going to cloud very fast and is going to move faster. <coughs> Sorry. So multi-level cloud will become essential uh, going forward that we should not get logged in with the word ISP. So that we have to take care. Secondly, tomorrow, uh, these regulatory guidelines are also changing very fast, evolving as per the uh, cloud policies and all. So uh, we also take care that all ISP should not belong to one parent country. You never know your bilateral ties, what will happen after a decade or two decades, you never know. So that also be taken care in the mind. And multi-level cloud is essential. So ultimately, the outcome is multi-level cloud is essential 
but the issue is the visibility but we cannot live without a multi level cloud because due to the vendor lock in and there are certain countries related constraint rate. so any questions from the audience chaliya thank you